type degree, okay? Now, when you do a lateral release, the other thing is, is you don't want to take your VMO off. To me, it's never made, or vastus lateralis, it's never made any sense to, to try to prevent surgery by strengthening the quadriceps and then go in and cut off about six centimeters of your vastus lateralis. And uh, so uh, I do a, a very limited lateral release, even when I do lateral releases, and, I, and uh, that's what we're going to do in this case. And usually that gets you plenty of, gets you in extension now. I can move the patella all the way off. I can see the sulcus. Here's, we got a, we got a very typical central sulcus to lateral lesion. You can see where he's been wearing lateral from central to lateral, just as you'd expect with a valgus vector in a normal knee. Now you can, if you want to get a little bit more mobility, you can all do, and by the way, you can do this all through that little mini incision. This is very, very easy. You know, you can come down and you can kind of go through your retropatellar tendon bursa a little bit and just open that up and you can release the fat pad down to the anterior horn of the meniscus and that lets you totally dislocate your entire patella so you can see here. And then as you go, come to do your patella, because you have not taken it off medially. Now, if you're going to do any kind of medial reef, you can go ahead and release it right now, and that'll even give you more aversion. In this case, we're not going to, so we don't need to. And so we'll be doing a lot of our work from the side and lining up everything without flipping the patella over. We don't need to. Now, I'm going to release the fat pad just a little bit off the front of the knee, off the, right through the interval between the meniscus horn and the fat pad, and that's a very safe area to do the release. And that just gives you a little bit more ability for your patella. And we'll see that. Now, come off my, you guys have a side, uh, a left side view. Now, you're, now, yeah, you're getting it a little bit there. Now you can see he's got a, a diffuse patellar loss. He's got a Weiberg, uh, Weiberg II patella. He does have medial facet. He's got a large lateral facet, and it's overhanging a little. Now, in this instance, if there's a large lateral facet and it's overhanging, I will do a lateral facetectomy. Uh, it, particularly if there's wear. In this case, we don't need to. He's just very central, and I would remove all of the bone, uh, bone spurs from this side in the suprapatellar area, and I would do a debridement all through this little mini lateral. Okay, let's go to the sulcus. That's where we're going first. Okay, let's put yeah. a Army Navy in. The question was, how much of a facetectomy would you do? Just, you can feel it with your finger. It's generally no more than a centimeter, and it kind of curls up over the top, and and you can feel it with your finger when you're there. It kind of curls and it overhangs, and I would do it right there. And I personally would do it, I do it on, I, the, uh, on, all, on my total knees, virtually every total knee I did, I do a, la uh, I do a lateral facetectomy on, because it's one of the areas that come back that are very symptomatic. Uh, so I routinely do a lateral facetectomy uh, on my total knees. And so I'm very quick to do that, because I have a lot of confidence in it. Uh, it was a procedure that Lanny Johnson showed me years and years ago, and it's been a great little procedure for the patellofemoral joint. Okay, so here we have our sulcus lesion, and you can see where we care about, of course, is where there's contact up at the full extension position. We don't need to cover that. What we care about is 30 to 60, and then down in the deep uh, sulcus, we don't care about that. So this device will cover exactly what we want. Uh, the, uh, the, we're going to go right in the middle, that's made to stay in the middle. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going we're to make sure that this touches superior and inferior. And I'm going to push it in just gently. And I want to make sure I'm touching on all sides. And I'm going to line it up right in the middle of my sulcus. And I think we're about right there. How does that look, Steve? That's pretty good? OK, maybe. Yeah, I need to be a little bit more down lateral. You just want to. Okay, I'm going to kind of hold it down for this myself. This is a step you really sure want to take your time collateral. with to get it right, because after you do this okay, step, Okay, this is follows. probably the most important step, i got to tell you, that and where you put your, because this is sets your whole angle. Okay, so, okay, we run our, our guide pin. You want to do it again? Yeah. 
Okay, good. And again, if the pin comes out as you're working, always put it back in the hole. Don't freehand, because you'll change your angle. So there's, we're in the middle of the you sulcus. Want to be the one holding that Looks pretty good. We've touched all drive. edges. We like it. Um, is there a mallet? Yeah, there we go. I like to take that pin in a little bit further with the mallet just to make sure it's going to stay put for me. Okay. All right, now here's the. Here's your step drill. We're going to go to the top, the shoulder, and we want to be, we want this shoulder to end where the original cartilage was. So if it's worn out in the perimeter, you're going to leave it a little proud from the bone where your pin is, because you want to look at and you want to replace what's there as a congruency. So here we go. In this case, he doesn't have much cartilage loss, so we're going to, this will be a little easier to do. So carefully lined up. Okay, here's the shoulder. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go a little slower here, and I'm going to keep watching because I just. Because I want to leave this very, very flush right at the. Again, if you're missing, if you're missing cartilage surfaces, leave it a little proud. Here we're going to be cleaning cartilage constantly just because there's some here. It went in a little further, and it brought the pin with it. Okay. Just make sure you put your drill yeah. back in to center the pin. Okay. Now notice what we did is we put our drill we put our drill point in to put our pin to make sure our pin gets the same hole. All right, we're there, and. Okay, now we're going to tap, and this is, this is more important than even the drill we just did, and that is that we, we're going to line this up with the laser line, again, with the cartilage surface that we're looking for. So we're going to go in. This bone's really soft, obviously, being cadaver. So. Okay, and I would rather leave this a little proud than go too deep. And so right now I'm going to go down just a quarter turn more, and I think we'll stop right there. It's a, I'd rather leave it just a tad proud. So... And I can, I can always run it a little deeper. Okay. okay, here's our screw. Here's your screw and screwdriver. And again, this screwdriver has a laser mark on it. This system is really well engineered. It's just everything's right to the millimeter. It's very. Okay, so now again, I'm going to leave it just a tad proud. Hey, uh, Steve and Lonnie, the question is do you always have to tap or you can just put the screw in if the bone seems soft? You know, I would suggest tapping because it's got a large cancellous thread, and even in this soft bone, I've got a good, I've got a good bite, yeah, I've always and it gives you such critical control that that it, you really want to line up to this laser line, and you want everything to go. I guess guys could, they could, uh, uh, they could do it without it. Uh, that, that's a position call. I, I would tend to tap more. Okay, you okay? Okay, let's take this out of there. Okay, so now you can see we're in place. We've got the screw pretty flush. We're going to clean the taper so we can put the little trial in. Now we want to see really what this trial looks like to the rest of our cartilage. Okay. So we've got this little suture on the end of the trial. And I'm going to make sure that that taps down. Okay. And indeed, it's a little proud. I don't know if I've got it all the way down. Let me tap it in a little bit. Is it down? Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Looks like, it looks like we're really good media. It looks like we're up about a millimeter all the way around. We're a little proud inferior. So I want to put that screw down another uh, millimeter, so I'm going to go a quarter turn. Okay, remember, it's a quarter turn for a millimeter. I'm going to try it again. Again, we'd rather have everything flush or slightly recessed, so that's where we're heading here. Much better. Okay, I like that much better. Okay, good. That's done.